All right, section 8-2. Uh, we're still, this whole chapter is, I think, called right triangles, I believe. Um, somewhere, I thought it was written down somewhere. Um, I just have my worksheet in front of me. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all about right triangles. Even at the end, it may not sound, it may not seem like it's about right triangles, but it is. So today, here's one of the most famous of all right triangle theorems. What do you think it is? That's right, Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. And we all should know this. Would you agree? Tell you what, let's, um, let's put a right triangle down here. Now, I'm using a right triangle because Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. With no other triangle does this work. Only if you have a right triangle. Okay? So when we uh, talk about Pythagorean theorem, we use certain letters. And these letters stand for certain sides of a right triangle. Um, a right triangle has two legs and it has a hypotenuse. All right, so one of the legs is A, the other leg is B. Hypotenuse, excuse me, the hypotenuse is always written as what? C. All right. I'm not going to go through the proof and all that kind of stuff. Now there is, there is a lesson that you could do that that kind of establishes the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to do that. Let's just learn it. Okay. Sure, at this point of the year, that's all you care about anyway. All right, it's just learning how uh, how to do this thing. So let's uh, let's take a look. What is it? It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Not the first time we've used this this year, is it? Okay, I think at the beginning of the year when we were in that other book, I think um, we used this. Am I right on that? Or I believe so. I've taught this so many times this year, I can't keep straight which class was what. Because four geometry classes plus this, this is now the fifth class that I've taught this <laughs> Pythagorean theorem. Okay, So uh, there you go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The C always represents the what? Hypotenuse. So the C is always going to be sitting here by itself. Okay, The A and the B represent the two legs of that right triangle. All right, so let's put some numbers in here. Have some fun with it and figure out how to find a missing side. All right. Uh, I'll make this really easy to begin with. Let's say that's 3 and this is 4. And we're trying to find this. Now, you should know that without even doing any math. What is C just by looking at it? should be 5. Did you understand that? Let's just see by Pythagorean theorem to see if this really is 5. So let's do this. So I'll tell you what. What I'm going to do here... I'm kind of preparing you for what we're going to do after the Pythagorean theorem. Instead of writing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I'm going to switch it around and just go c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Does that bother you too much? All right. I just I didn't change it at all, did I? Okay. Yeah. Just same exact thing. Um, there's a reason though I'm going to do this. Okay. So let's let's write it like this from now on instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, it's not that big of a deal. But what are we doing? We're actually solving for C, aren't we? So C squared equals, the A and the B represent the two legs of the right triangle. So I have 3 squared plus what? 4 squared. I'm showing all the little steps here so you know where I'm getting the numbers. So C squared equals what? 9 plus 16. C squared equals, add those up, that's 25. That's right. So get rid of the square. We've done that tons of times, right? So we take the square root of both sides, take the square root of this. So what's c equal to? It's 5. Now, technically, in algebra, it would be plus or minus 5, wouldn't it? But what are we solving for? We talk, we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday. Right, finding the length of a side. So am I going to have a negative 5 for a length of a side? So no. I mean, technically, if I this math right here, doing this math, c would equal po positive 5 and negative 5. Because if you had put it back into this, it would work. But... We're finding the length of a side. We have to understand what we're solving for. So I just use the positive version of it. So C is equal to 5. And again, that's one of our special triangles, isn't it? It's a 3, 4, 5 special right triangle. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's do another one. All right. Let's, um, there we go. Let's do, let's do another one. Now that was actually kind of a special triangle because all three sides were nice whole numbers. It's not all that often, to tell you the truth, that when you have a right triangle, all three sides are nice whole numbers. Usually one of them is like a, at least one of them is a square root of something, okay? I'm going to show you another special type of triangle. So let's just kind of uh, file that in our memory. So 3, 4, 
five. That's that's a special rate triangle, okay? What if I did this real quick? Watch. This is kind of like a a different version of this. What if I had this to be six and this to be ten? Any idea what this would be just kind of in your head? It'd be eight. How'd you get eight? Just in your head like that. Do you Pythagorean theorem that quick? No, because look. What goes into six and ten? Two. Two goes into this what? Three times. Two goes into this five times. So this was three times two, and this was five times two. So I've got a three here. I've got a five here. So what would this be? This would be a three, four, five triangle, wouldn't it? All right. Except I took four and did what to it? Multiplied it by two. So technically, this is still a three, four, five triangle. Would you agree? All right. It's just we doubled all these. So six, eight. 10. I could keep going. I could multiply it by 3, right? So what would that be? That would be 9, 12, 15. I could keep on going and have a whole list of these, couldn't I? All right? So those are all special triangles, but they all boil down to one special triangle, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. That is very, very helpful to you. If you take the SAT, which you probably have already done if you're going to do it, or again, you take some other kind of a entrance test to your college, to the Army, to the Marines, to whatever, um, that's definitely something that you could see on one of those entrance type of tests and just be able to recognize it. So if they said that this is 15 and uh, this is 12 and they ask you to solve for this, instead of going through that whole entire Pythagorean theorem, you should just be able to look at it and say, what goes into 15 and 12? 3 does, right? 3 goes into this 5 times, 3 goes into this 4 times, oh, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, right? So it's 3 times what? 3. So what is this? This is a 9. Make sense? It's a lot quicker, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that can be very, very helpful. All right, so that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Let's just show you a couple other triangles. I'll get rid of all these. Let's just show you a couple other um, special types of triangles. They call these Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples. At least this book does. I guess different books could call it different things, but that's what they call these. All right? And they're called common Pythagorean triples. These are ones that you see every once in a while. 3, 4, 5 is the biggie. That's the one that you probably see more than any other one. But here's another one. What if I said this was 5 and this was 12 and I ask you to solve for C? Well, let's do Pythagorean theorem. Let's find it, and you're going to find out that this also comes out to a nice whole number. Now, I'm going to do a couple of these, and you're going to think that every single one of these right triangles comes out to all nice whole numbers here, but that's not necessarily the case. All right, so let's do this. So we got c squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared. And uh, c squared equals, what's that, 25 plus 144. c squared equals, what's that, 169. Is that right? And if you put 169 into your calculator, square root it, you get 13. So look at that. That's another Pythagorean triple. Why? Because all three sides come out to nice whole numbers. All right, so that's one of our other ones. 5, 12, 13. You get the idea? All right. I'll just show you two more. I don't have all these memorized, but 8, 15, 17 is another one. If I took 8 squared plus 15 squared, it's going to equal 17 squared. Okay? And here's another one. 7, 24, 25. That's another one. Okay? Again, if I took 7 squared plus 24 squared, that's going to equal 25 squared. Go ahead and try it on your calculator. You can see that that works out. So these are just kind of, and I'm sure there's probably more. These are the ones that I've always seen in books. Um, but again, it would be very helpful to memorize a few of these. You don't have to memorize them because you could always go back to Pythagorean theorem, couldn't you? But it's kind of nice to memorize them because you could always uh, you could do these really quick. For instance, now I just you just saw it and you see it right here. But what if you had this? What if you had this is five and this is x and this was thirteen? Without going through that whole Pythagorean theorem. You could just look at it and say, 5, what, 13? Oh, yeah, that's one of my special ones, 5, 12, 13. And then you got an answer quick as that. Make sense? Okay. All right, enough of that. Let's, um, what kind of triangles were all of these? Right triangles. They were all right triangles. Okay? So watch this. If I took, remember what I said here? 
if I took 13 squared, that should equal what? 5 squared plus what? 12 squared. What kind of a triangle does that mean that I have then? It means I would have a what? A right triangle. So if I take the C, which is the longest side, okay, and I square it, that should equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Hear what I said? Okay, kind of said it a little more fancy than what I've been saying it, but this is a phrase that you may see from time to time. The hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In fact, there's a line in uh, The Wizard of Oz. You ever see The Wizard of Oz? You know, the Tin Man and all that kind of stuff. Who was the guy that was dumb that needed a brain? The Scarecrow or something like that? Was that who it was? Okay. So the Scarecrow gets his brain, right, from the wizard or whoever gives him the brain. Is that the wizard giving him the brain? Yeah, yeah okay. And he actually gives him, like, a diploma or something, doesn't he? Um, and then the scarecrow kind of snaps out of it, and he's like, oh, the sum of the square, or the hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. But if you listen very carefully to what he says, he's actually trying to say Pythagorean theorem, basically, okay, in a long, fancy way just to make himself uh, sound real smart. But if you listen to what he says, he actually says it a little bit incorrectly. There's, um, it's not exactly uh, correct. Um, maybe one day I should look. I, I always mean to do this, and I never think about it. But I should look on YouTube one time, and maybe they have a clip somewhere well, when they when they do that. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, it would be nice to have that clip where you could see it, but you could look that up yourself. But it's kind of interesting to see that they try to say the Pythagorean, and they try to make him sound real smart, but he actually says it um, a little bit wrong okay he's close but it's not exactly right I forget exactly what was the wrong part about it but I know it's not exactly right okay all right so if it's a right triangle watch if you have a right triangle you should be able to take C which is the longest side and it will equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides what's interesting is this if I took the longest side which is C and if I squared it, and if it came out bigger, right, so if I give you three sides, and if it came out bigger than a squared plus b squared, I can also tell what kind of a triangle it is. Now, would that be a right triangle? It wouldn't be a right triangle, would it? No, and you said it. It would be an obtuse triangle. Okay, so if you take the longest side and square it, and then compare it to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, the two smaller sides, if c squared is bigger than this right here, then it's going to be an obtuse triangle. That's kind of interesting. What do you think the next one would be? All right. If c squared is what? Less than a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be an acute triangle. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Um, I think... I think in another chapter in this book. Now I know you haven't been using this book, but there is another chapter in the book that says, um, let me just think of something off the top of my head. Let me ask you this. They're going to do something something like this. They're going to say, okay, given three sides of a triangle, let's say one side is three, the other side is four, and the other side is, I don't know, let's say ten. All right? Is this triangle right here, is it a right triangle? Is it an obtuse triangle? Is it an acute triangle, or is it a triangle to even begin with? Well, here's a little test to see even if it's a triangle. Because watch, if I had a 3, right, and if I had a 4, is there any way that this right here could be a 10? No, the 10 is going to be way too big, isn't it? Because if you think about this, let's make this a little bit neater. I'm not going to get real, real detailed on this. Okay, I'm not going to try to do it perfectly to scale, but let's take it. That's a little bit bigger than the 3. Would you consider that 4 if that was 3? Okay. Is there any way that that could be a 10? No matter how I tilt the thing, watch. Watch. If I tilt it like this, what's happening to that third side if I go like this? It's getting smaller and smaller. Okay. It's getting bigger and bigger here. But still, could it be 10? Watch. If I take it all the way to here, just completely flat, then how big is that? That's 7. Is there any way that I could make this bigger to make this a 10 and keep this 3 and keep this 4? There's no way, is there? 
Okay? So can you even have a triangle with 3, 4, and 10? No. What has to happen is this. Just, oops. I don't know what I did. Okay, watch. That third side, imagine a side connecting from here to here as I move this around. Okay? Watch. If I moved it here, what's that third side have to be? It's got to be bigger than what? Like if I, if I put them right on top of each other, like right here, one side is three, the other side is four. What's that little bit sticking out? How much? Say it. It's one, right, okay, it's one. So if I stretch this out to make a triangle out of it, do you see the third side from here to here? That has to be what? It's got to be bigger than one, right? All right, well, 1.1 is bigger than one. It doesn't have to be a two, does it? Okay, it just has to be bigger than one. But watch, it's got to be bigger than 1, but it also has to be what? Less than 7, that's right. So it's got to be somewhere between 1 and what? 7. Make sense? Okay. What also has to be true is this, that if I add up, if I add up the two smaller sides, I'm not talking about squaring them, just talking about adding them up. See that 7? This has to be bigger than the third side. Is that true in this situation? No. So this is not even a triangle to begin with. I can't even make a triangle with those three sides. You okay with that? But what if I had this? What if I had, let's do different sides. Let's go 3 and 7 and um, 9. Could I, could I have a triangle with those sides? Yeah, because look, if I take the two smaller ones, they add up to be bigger than the third one. So yes, I can have a triangle. So before you determine if it's right obtuse or acute, I first have to determine if it's even a triangle to begin with. Sometimes they're not even triangles like this. I would say what? No triangle, right? You can't say it's right obtuse or acute because it's not even a triangle to begin with. But on this one you say, oh yeah, it is a triangle. How can I determine if it's right obtuse or acute? Take the longer side. Remember, C always represents the longer side. So what's the longer side here? 9. So I square it. I leave a blank here. I'll put a question mark, okay? And then I take the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So what is that? That's 81. This is what? 9 and 49. So what's that? 58. So 81 is what to 58? It's greater than. So this kind of triangle right here will be what kind of a triangle? It's got to be obtuse because the largest side, if I square it, it's going to be bigger than the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Make sense? So that's kind of the stuff that they're going to ask you as well. Okay, they're going to ask you, is it a right? They're going to give you three sides like this. Is it right, obtuse, or acute? You're going to do that. Now you're also, now we didn't do, we probably didn't get as far as I wanted to because I just did these special triangles, these Pythagorean triples. But what if I had a triangle, let's just do this super quick. What if I had one like two and three and uh, four? Actually, sorry. Let's say I don't know that. Okay, call it x right there, and it's a right triangle. How would I find this? Just go 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9, equals what? x squared. So what's x equal to? The square root of 13. So that would be the third side. Okay? Let me give you a worksheet, and then you can go.